I am Caitlin Dernier, and this is Sam Jort, and that's Nate Hellmeyer, and we are the creators of Walkthrough, a virtual tour program application that allows users to upload and view virtual tours of rental housing spaces. Um, when we were first deciding on an idea of what to make for a senior project, we wanted to really create a product that would be not only usable by the general public, but usable like very soon and somewhat helpful, especially to people um, our age um, that might be looking to do something like rent housing spaces, especially in the college life. It's a pretty difficult thing to do, especially when you're moving somewhere to the time and you can't Maybe, maybe can't get there to find a rental space. Um, and where pictures aren't really sufficient to really get the feel of how a, a room or an apartment is. So walkthrough allows you to have free, somewhat free movement throughout a space and really get the feel for an area that you might be interested in. So why is walkthrough needed? First of all, it's very efficient and convenient. Uh, having all the tours in one space uh, or one app makes it uh, very easy for potential buyers to look through and find a place that they want, might want to stay. Uh, you have no need to travel, so you save time and money. It also saves the realtors time and money because they don't have to schedule as many appointments for potential buyers because it, because it guides the clientele interest. And it is also very appealing to the young homeowner market because it is new technology and it's, it's easy to use. So my responsibilities while building the walkthrough was first building the personal login and profile and that includes the, the local login, you're editing your profile information, um, registration, and also added a uh, Facebook login button. That, uh, it was kind of difficult to do that because it was a little bit more intricate than other things, I had to configure a lot of settings to get it to connect to Facebook and get your personal information. Um, the next thing I worked on was uploading and downloading the tours, and this was by far the hardest part of this project. Um, at first, we tried to upload all the images and all the information together at one time, and that seemed to be a little bit difficult for us, um, just because of the upload speeds and download speeds of the servers. Um, so then we decided to do it one image at a time and then send the information uh, like the number of bedrooms, bathrooms separately and that seemed to be a little bit easier for us. <coughs> uh, I also created a view tour information page and that tells everything about the tour that you want to see like the address, um, how many bedrooms, bathrooms, the status of it. It also shows a nice little map view with a place marker. Um, also on this page, you can contact the tour creator via email or phone. That's if the creator puts in that information and it does it right through the app, which makes it very convenient. And you can also get the directions through Apple Maps. You just click on the directions button, it pops up Apple Maps. It shows, it gets your current location and then it shows where um, the tour is and it gives you route guidance right through Apple Maps. Um, and also I helped with the search functionality, which is both user and tour functionality. Okay, so some of my responsibilities um, this semester was to get a database set up to manage the app's data. Um, this is challenging because I never had worked with anything like databases before. So to start the semester, I researched our different options and came across a website called Apogee, which lets you store different information, but it wasn't really robust enough for the app because it was more text-based than the images which we needed. So I continued to research and I came across something called MySQL, um, which is what we ended up going with. Um, so I downloaded the MySQL database um, and a program called PHP My Admin, which led uh, let you manage that database. So with that I also was responsible for setting up a server. So this was also challenging for the same reasons. So at first what I did was I set up my laptop as a local server using a program called Apache. Uh, this worked and was good for testing because I got the same setup set up on their computer so they can 
work through testing with the database. But one challenge we ran into is broadcasting that server so that any app, any app user can access the database. Um, so I was looking into buying domain names or you know having like a web server, but our mentor David actually had his own server, so he just said we can use some space on his. So that's what we ended up doing. And then my other responsibilities were helping create the server-side scripts, uh, which were basically the search functionality. So when you search inside the app for tours, number of bedrooms, number of bathrooms, what the script does is it goes and queries the database, and it'll return all the entries that have that set number of bathrooms, etc. cetera. Um, I also helped write the script that helps save the user profile information. So when you edit your profile or create a new profile, it did the same thing, created an entry in the database. And then finally, I helped with the tour upload and download, which like Nate described is the hardest part of the project. And we really all came together and got that accomplished. My responsibilities um, were mostly formed around the creating and viewing of a virtual tour. For our project, we decided to use a new language, it's Objective-C and Xcode. So we had to not only learn how to use and manipulate um, the different classes in Objective-C, but how to create our own. So that was a little bit difficult. Um, we wanted to make a virtual tour that first viewing a tour and experiencing it was pretty simple. It's kind of like Google Maps where you'll just, you can look around yourself in one viewpoint and then you can jump to another viewpoint and look around yourself there. Um, but the difficulty with that is well, what happens if a user wants only three viewpoints, they're sitting in a the corner, they don't want to have to turn around and look at the back, or they only want one viewpoint, what happens if they want one picture and another picture somewhere else. So we really had, I really had to look at um, not only how to create a tour, but how to create a, like a user-proof tour, sort of, where no matter what the user does, it's going to work and it's going to be functional and it's going to come out the way they expect it to work. Um, so that was really difficult. We had some people test it and tell us what they thought, um, really use it, try to mostly try to break it to see what we what needed to be fixed. So creating a virtual tour um, was a difficult process, mostly because we had to consider how other people who had never used the technology before might interpret some of the things like taking pictures and how to move from one side to another, what, what jumping to another viewpoint means. Um, then moving throughout the space, after we went through the nightmare of uploading the tours, we had to get them back and make them not only a usable class, but the correct usable class. So that was another um, big challenge for getting the viewpoints back and being able to actually experience a virtual tour on walkthrough. I also helped with the aesthetics and the graphics um, to make the application look not um, so much like a senior design product, but more like a professional application that you would actually purchase on the App Store. Uh, like we've talked about before, these are some of the major features that we have in Walkthrough. You're able to create a virtual tour with two viewpoints and four pictures at each viewpoint. Um, we did that for space region reasons. Uh, you're able to move throughout a space by clicking forward, right, and left, uh, just like you would through Google Street View. Um, you're able to have a personal login and profile and edit and register. View tour information, uh, contact the tour creator via, via email and phone, and also get directions through Apple Maps. Uh, search by state, city, zip codes, and also by the number of bedrooms, bathrooms, price, and if it's for sale or for rent. When we were, after we decided on the type of product that we wanted to make, we really had to focus on the type of people that might use the product. And we came down to four um, potential really invested users in Walkthrough. Um, the first being a regular average college, college student that's not only look, looking to maybe look and rent a space in a city or town, but also possibly sharing his or, his or her own apartment for subleasing reasons. We also thought real estate agents that have rental properties might be super interested in something like this, as well as landlords that are attempting to fill out vacant units maybe for a whole year or if something happens and a tenant has to leave, those types of filling spaces are often a little bit difficult. We also in the future hope to extend um, walkthrough to event planning spaces um, to give people the opportunity to see event spaces.
Okay, so some of the future features. Um, this is an idea we all plan on taking past senior design. Um, like they were saying, currently we only allow inside the tours two viewpoints with four different pictures around. Uh, ideally, we'd like the tour to become exactly like Google Street View, where it's a 360 degree view, where you can you know step around as much as you want. Um, we actually had some meetings with some local realtors and they suggested that we'd focus more on the rental market and that event planning spaces. Um, this is because there's just too much um, competition in the uh, for sale market. Um, so our current plan is to target the Iowa City area for when we release the app as sort of like a beta, beta launch. Um, so what, we're, what we plan on doing is trying to get in contact with the big apartment owners like apartments downtown and places like that and get together with them and so when we price the app all the viewers are going to be able to download the app for free but maybe they have to list each one of their tours for a dollar or they've got to pay us a certain fee um, per year to list their tours. And then also some other features we wanted to add was the ability to just scroll through a feed of tours without having to search or anything. So like maybe the newest tours that have been uploaded. Um, the ability to save favorite tours. And then just continue to clean up the app's design. So we're going to do a quick little demo here. Yeah, there you go. So this is the beginning screen for walkthrough. Um, right now you can log in through your own email or through Facebook, which is interesting. We'll do the email right now. Um, you can sign up um, under new user. Yeah. Um, Twitter. Yeah. You didn't Searching, seeing your own tours, and creating your tours. Um, you could edit your profile. Um, so, if you search a tour, you can search for address, city, state, zip code, price, bedrooms. We'll say. So the tour information page brings you directly to Apple Maps, um, the cute little button. Um, and it will give you directions, which will take you to the Apple Maps and give you directions from where you are. Just a super convenient feature. You can also contact whoever made it, which is me. Um, or you can view the tour. We need to get like a loading screen on this page while we So viewing the tour, it's kinda of hard to see there's a little button there. We're looking for spaces, jump to the next viewpoint. Move. This is our beautiful apartment. Please <laughs> <laughs> jump back. Yeah. Um, I college. Want to that one. <laughs> 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 so Going back, you could also see just a list of your tours, which right now I don't have any. Um, tour search, searching for all of them, we'll just show you a whole list of all of them that have. Um, creating a tour right now, so it'll, you can take a picture, move to a new viewpoint, right and left. As you take the pictures, they form the virtual tour. Once you have four in a row, it'll ask you to pick a viewpoint to skip forward. Or you can do that before you have all four filled up. Um, and 
and then load it up and it'll be, it's accessible pretty instantaneously into the rest of the database. 